Now, the big question is, is now the right time to do that? Should the Fed start unwinding its balance sheet? We turn to our experts who have had an inside look at the Fed. Former New York Fed senior economist Bill Lee, who used to be the big wig at City when it comes to that type of stuff, and former Federal Reserve senior economist Paul Kubiak. The balance sheet gentleman had ballooned during the recession in this effort for the Fed to stabilize the economy. Bill Lee, to you first, is this the right thing or the wrong thing to do, and is the timing correct? You know, Janet Yellen has emphasized that she wants to slowly wind down the balance sheet. But to where? Where's the target balance sheet level that she's trying to shoot for? There's no framework. There's no theory. There's nothing to guide us. Well, wait, so wait, wait. What do you mean no framework? Um, they were pretty clear, and we can put up exactly so that people That's understand right. exactly what's going to happen. She said she will initially cap selling yes. both treasuries and, of course, what are called agent securities, agency securities like mortgage-backed securities, capped at about $10 billion total no. per month all the way to the end of this year. And then she'll start to, I guess, raise those caps every single quarter, right. tapping out at $50 billion per month in October of 2018. Isn't that a framework? But, Liz, that's telling you how fast they're going to be reducing the balance sheet, not where. Right? It tells you nothing about where the ultimate target's going to be. Our best estimates that the street economists have come up with is that they're probably going to go down to somewhere between two and a half to three and a half trillion because we need more reserves now than we did in the, before the crisis because the Fed has changed its operating system. The Fed now pays interest on reserves, so banks now hold more reserves, so the balance sheet automatically becomes bigger. But how much bigger? So we have essentially seat of the pants policy being made here, except all, the one thing we do know is what you just said. It's going to be really slow. And, and, and slow going where? So, so it's really an unguided missile that we're talking about, but a very slow one. Uh, so that so the slow, markets Paul, won't be disturbed. So slow that I, I was thinking it's almost like going to be like claymation, you know, this, this stop <laughs> action where you stop and move Gumby's hand and move Pokey's hoof. I, it, it's going to be unbelievably slow so as to not spook the market. But to you, is the timing right? And uh, is it too early, too late, or just perfect? My own guess is that it's, there's no, no need to do it now, um, except that they this want to raise Paul. interest I'm so rates. Sorry. That was to Paul. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, Paul. Oh, uh, from my point of view, I think uh, Janet sort of put it out on the line where she said, you know, if not now, then when? Uh, unemployment is, uh, is, is low. Inflation is low. Uh, asset prices are pretty strong. So it, it seems like the right time to start. I mean, and it's a very gradual process. It's quite evident, though, that through this entire news conference, and we like to make it very understandable for our viewers, the one thing that could throw them off their course that they stated today, which is one more rate hike this year, is inflation. Here's what Janet Yellen said. Listen, and then we'll have you react. If we determined our view changed, um, and instead of thinking that the factors holding inflation down were transitory, we came to the view that they would be persistent, it would require an alteration in monetary policy. Because we have such low inflation, Bill, it's yeah. at about 1.9 percent. Well, between 1.4, 1.9 in the past couple of months. And what does that right. tell us? That tells us that there's no pricing power, even though we have a very tight labor market, which she called pretty desirable. I'm well, wondering, I does that worry you? Well, actually, you know, given the numbers that they gave us, they're projecting the unemployment rate is going to be 4.1 percent for the next two years, well, about a half a percentage point below their so-called long run weight. The, you know, it's telling us that the unemployment rate is a lousy indicator of slack, and we should not be using that to measure tightness. And I think that's the thing that's causing us to be surprised that inflation is so low. There's actually other measures that Janet Yellen did mention about job openings, but the level of gross hiring really hasn't kept up with, the, with job openings, which means that firms are not willing to pay up for people, except in very specialized sectors like construction workers and, and, and special skills that are, that are in short supply. Paul, with all due respect to the Federal Reserve, all of what they've done, all of this liquidity, these bond purchases, bring us to what they call a GDP for 2017 of just 2.4 percent. But then it goes down. Their median projection for GDP, gross domestic product, the output of all goods and services for 2018 is 2.1 percent. President Trump wants 3 percent. Is he going to get it or not? Uh, n not if you look at these numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have uh, basically more of the same. Slow, slow growth, uh, low inflation. Uh, that, that's basically what the crystal ball of the Fed says and all the, all the people in the dot plots are, are seeing for the, the next few years. So uh, we're, n we're not headed towards three if you, if you believe their crystal ball. Yeah. Paul, Bill, thank you very much.